Hey, how's it going everybody, and welcome back to another Fallout 4 mod throwback. The series where we take a deep dive on an older Fallout mod suggested by one of you guys. This week, we're taking a look at the Recharger Gun by Bones. This is going to add the classic Recharger rifle and pistol from Fallout New Vegas into Fallout 4. Now, before we get into the details of this mod, I do want to remind you that this is a community-driven series, meaning you guys get to suggest the topics for future episodes. So, if you have an older Fallout 4 mod that you'd like to see covered in depth, go ahead and comment it down below, and it may be picked for a future episode of Fallout 4 Mod Throwback. Alright, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and jump into the mod. Now, if you haven't played New Vegas, the Recharger Rifle and Recharger Pistol were both weapons in Fallout New Vegas that didn't require any ammo. Instead, these things would recharge on their own, but would only have a limited capacity of shots before needing to recharge. Now, Bones has beautifully recreated that system here in Fallout 4. So, as soon as you grab this thing, you will not require any ammo to fire it, which makes it a great early game weapon given that you have no need for ammo. That being said, you want to pick your shots because if you blow through this too quickly, you'll be sitting for a pretty lengthy reload cycle where it will load up the new rounds. That being said, you only need to load enough rounds to fire, so as long as you have some shots, you'll be alright. As you can see from the footage playing in the background, this has a beautiful custom model and texture, as well as some really awesome attachments, the ability to convert it from a pistol to a rifle using Fallout 4's modification system. That being said, it does not come with custom animations because there is literally no reload. This is a recharger gun, so instead you will just be recharging all of your ammo as opposed to reloading it. If you'd like to get your hands on one of these weapons, there's a couple ways to acquire it. The base file makes it so that it is just a replacer for the unique weapon Limitless Potential. Or, you can download an optional file that will add it to vendors for the Brotherhood of Steel and Institute. I think that's a pretty fair way to add it to the leveled list, as it's pretty overpowered to not have to rely on ammo, and seeing this thing on multiple enemies at a time would be probably a little bit unimmersive. As I recall from New Vegas, pretty much the only way to get a hold of one of these was to buy it from a vendor, or be lucky enough to find it on the corpse of one of the Bright followers. Now, I believe that's all of the important details of this thing out of the way, let's go ahead and check it out in-game and see what exactly it has to offer. Alright, while we don't have any cool animations to check out, we do have that really neat loading feature that is the main function of the recharger rifle. As you can see at the bottom right, we have 7 out of 7 rounds. And if we were to blow through all of those really quickly, you'll see they start counting back up over time, meaning you can fire this thing almost infinitely as long as you shoot slow enough. So, if you just keep it going for a while there, they will slowly rebuild. And even once you get to zero, you can usually load up another shot pretty quick. So, definitely a really interesting firing system and totally unique to anything else in Fallout 4. But while infinite ammo is pretty cool, how about the stats to balance it? Here we're taking a look at the Recharger Pistol, the most basic version of the weapon, with no perks whatsoever. So, we have a base damage of 10, a charge of 7, a fire rate of 50, a range of 149, an accuracy of 76, a weight of 11.3 pounds, and a value of 216 caps, as this thing is pretty rare. So, having a base damage all the way down at 10 is a pretty good way to balance out infinite ammo. But what if you were to put on a bunch of attachments to really get the most out of this thing? Well, even with the best receiver and attachments, we still only get to a base damage of 35. Keeping in mind, vanilla perks, so you can get that a little bit higher with some rifleman perks. We still have a charge of 7, a fire rate of 50, a range of 167, an accuracy of 82, a weight of 17.6 pounds, and a value of 400 caps. Now what's interesting is right there it says charge of 7. That has to do with the way that the ammo type is implemented because everything in Fallout 4 does technically require an ammo. If we switch to this, it's actually going to change our charge value. So let's go ahead and grab our upgraded version here, and you'll see we'll start charging up to 20. This thing does have some increased capacity, so you get to a total of 20 maximum capacity as opposed to 7, which makes this a little bit more viable. So, what kind of attachments are going to be required to take this lowly recharger pistol into this really cool focused overcharge recharger rifle? Well, let's go ahead and check. There's a good handful of attachments here that can do some pretty cool stuff. Starting with our capacitors. As you can see, we have the standard capacitor, the photon exciter, beta wave tuner, boosted capacitor, photon agitator, gamma wave emitter, maximized capacitor, boosted photon agitator, and boosted gamma wave emitter. And then finally, the overcharge capacitor, giving you that max damage of 35. And I don't know if you noticed, but as we move down the line here, we actually get more tubes at the top of our weapon, showing the recharging capability of this thing. Pretty neat. For barrels, we do have options for a short, medium, and long barrel. For grips, we have the standard grip and the standard stock, so you can change it from pistol to rifle. For magazines, we have standard, large, and extra large. 
we do have some sight options. We have the standard iron sight, which is just going to be that front post there. We have improved iron sights, which is going to add a rear little ring sight. We have glow sight versions of the improved sights. We have our short combat scope, our short scope, and our medium combat scope. We have the option for a beam focuser or a fine-tuned beam focuser. And then finally, we have some color options. So for starters, we have yellow, which is going to refer to the tubes at the top. We have a Brotherhood skin, which looks very nice. An Institute skin. A pink skin. Purple, which is actually black, but with purple tubes. And then finally, the vault Tech skin. And I really, really like this one. I think it fits the aesthetic of this gun very well. Just about the only thing that I feel would be missing from these attachments are some conversions that are available to some of the standard weapons in Fallout 4. For example, maybe an option to add automatic fire or possibly a splitter barrel to turn this thing into more of a shotgun. However, I could see how those could be overpowered with the use of infinite ammo. So maybe it's more of a balancing act than anything. And then finally, we reach the testing portion of this video. We're going to be testing this weapon three times. First with the basic version of the pistol with the least damage possible. Then again with that rifle we made that has the maximum damage at its base. And then finally we're going to test the rifle a second time but with maximum rifleman perks to see what the total damage that thing can possibly do in the late game is. To see if this is more of an early game weapon or if it's viable through your entire playthrough. So, starting on the left here with the standard Deathclaw, let's see what this thing can do. And as you can see, we might be here for a while. Alright, it's already been a minute and we've barely gotten this thing past half health. I think it's safe to say that the damage on this thing at its core is pretty rough. It could definitely be used against something humanoid, but against a Deathclaw you're going to want to switch to something better. It may seem underpowered, but I think this is a pretty good representation of how it functioned in New Vegas. It's pretty accurate. Alright, we're coming up on the home stretch. I really just had to finish this thing off. We already invested too much time. This is definitely not an experience I'd recommend to anybody. Do not try to use this thing on a Deathclaw. Just don't. Let's see how the rifle does. I'm hoping it'll be a bit better. The damage is significantly increased. As well as our ammo capacity, which is going to help a lot. Yeah, already you can see we're halfway down. And we are only barely running out of ammo. And to be fair, I didn't even let it charge all the way up to 20. One small perk of this thing is as you shoot it, it will be recharging some of the ammo as it is on a time cycle as opposed to when you stop firing. And that Deathclaw is down. Now that may have taken longer than it should have for, say, a normal weapon, but again, free ammo, so it's kind of hard to complain. Let's try this one more time with the Max Rifleman perk. Alright, with Max Rifleman perk, the damage goes up from 35 to 70, so we should be able to kill this thing twice as fast. There we go. 15 shots out of a capacity of 20. That's not bad. It may be struggling to keep up with some of the later game enemies as this is a level 1 standard Deathclaw, but it's not terrible. So, definitely worth getting the upgrades and the perks to make this thing viable. Alright, that was the recharger gun. I gotta say I love having this thing in my game just because I love to see things from New Vegas brought back into Fallout 4, and it's a very beautiful recreation of it. It can be a bit underwhelming at times given its damage potential, but again, free ammo, so you kind of have to balance that out a little bit, otherwise this thing becomes pretty OP pretty fast. I do think it might be nice to see this a little bit earlier in the game, as finding it on vendors at the Institute or Brotherhood of Steel implies that it's going to take a while to get this thing, and I feel like by then it's going to be more viable to run something with a little bit more damage potential. At that point, you'll probably have access to a bigger ammo supply, so it'd be worth taking something like a standard laser rifle. Either way, this thing is super cool, and I still love seeing it nonetheless, and the skin options are always a huge plus. So, if you want to grab this thing for yourself, you can try it down in the description below. There is a link to both the PC and the Xbox version. Also, one quick thing that I noticed that I'll have some pop-ups in the video, when I said that you find this thing on the Brotherhood and Institute vendors, it's actually Brotherhood and Good Neighbor. Still, same stuff applies, it's going to take you a while to get this thing, so just keep that in mind. Alright, as always, if you enjoyed the mod, don't forget to endorse it, show the mod authors some appreciation for all of their hard work, and if you enjoyed this video, drop a rating. Subscribe if you haven't already for more videos just like this. Don't forget to drop a comment for future episodes of Mod Throwback, and I hope to see you in the next one. Peace! And really quick, I'd like to make a shout out to all of our patrons.
Your donations are greatly appreciated and really help to support the channel in videos just like this one. So again, thank you.